Hi, welcome to Ask Me About Dyslexia. My name is Pam Spock and I'm a dyslexia specialist. Now, I don't have dyslexia and so it's a little bit hard for me to understand how my students feel until I remember something from my past. As long as I can remember, I have been terrible at sports. Terrible. PE was a nightmare. I hated every minute of it. If you love it, more power to you. No offense. I just am no good. And because of it, I have never cared anything at all for sports. I am just, I'm just bad. And I can't pay attention to sports. I don't even like to watch sports on TV or in real life. And the only time that I watch sports in real life, that I go to a sporting event, I go to a game or a meet or something, is if somebody that I care deeply about is in it. it has to be like one of my students who I tutor or one of my own children. Because I do not go to sporting events just for the fun of it or watch them on TV. It is not enjoyable for me. I have a hard time paying attention. It's like I have ADD for sports or something. I just can't focus on them. I have never understood them. I don't understand why people love them so much. I, I, I am so bad at sports that I don't even like to play board games. Okay, games just don't make sense to me. If I read the directions to a game, I, it, it doesn't make any sense. I actually have to play a board game in order to learn it. If somebody tries to tell me the directions, it just goes in one ear and out the other. I have to learn a game by doing it. And I really, most of the time, don't enjoy it. That's a board game. Okay, nothing physical involved. But I think that you need the same part of your brain in order to play some type of sport because I just never could get it. I never played organized sports. I was never on a team or anything. Uh, and so my only experience is in PE and it was just awful. I, I never had any clue what was going on. I'm sure that they explained to us how to play soccer and I probably just tuned it out because I wasn't getting it. It was bad. And I always just did my best, but my best was never good enough for anybody and any of my classmates. I was always picked last for the team, which was humiliating. Kids would yell at me because I missed the ball. It was, it was awful. And to make matters worse, when I was in high school, I had PE all the way through. That's very unusual. And we had co-ed PE ninth through 12th grade. It wasn't like the whole school was in PE at once, but they had, you know, PE at several different times and they mixed it all up. Ninth through 12th grade, boys and girls together. And so when I was a freshman girl, I had PE with senior guys. I think I almost died. And we played dodgeball frequently. I wish that I had been smart enough to just catch the ball so I could get out. No. My self-preservation was too great and I would dodge the ball and end up being one of the last ones there and the guys would just pummel me. It was awful. Well, one day as I was sitting there trying to pay attention to a student telling about some game that had been on TV the night before and my mind started to wander and 
then it suddenly dawned on me that me hating sports and my insecurities connected to sports and my fear of sports and my anxiety tied to sports was actually a gift because I realized that that was how my students felt in school, probably all day. They were met with difficulty after difficulty all day, every day. Now I had to deal with many PE classes. We had it a couple times a week, right up through high school. Well, it was probably once a week in elementary, I don't remember. But I know that we had it twice in a seven day rotation in high school. And one of those times was a double length period because every day, the way that our schedule was, every day one of our classes was an 80 minute period instead of a 40 minute period. And they did that to accommodate labs. But anyways, because PE was a class in that cycle, that would, it would just rotate right on through. And so I had to endure 80 minutes of PE with senior guys. Midway through my sophomore year, I started counting down the number of days that I had left of PE until I graduated. I would not go back for one single day of high school. Some people want to go back and relive the glory days. Not me. Nope. Survive PE and I am not going back to that place. <laughs> so anyways, that I, I still get a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach when anything remotely athletically related comes up. If somebody asks me if I'm going to the game later, everything inside me tightens up. The anxiety rises. When my child says that they want to <laughs> run in cross country, when my child says they want to play spring soccer, I am trying really hard not to pass these fears and anxieties and strong dislikes <laughs> onto my kids. It's probably going to happen anyways, but so far it has not happened to the degree that it has happened to me. I certainly never would have run in cross country or asked to play soccer in any organized form or fashion outside of PE. So the fact that my kids are actually interested in those things is a step in the right direction. But anyways, back to our point here. <laughs> I digress. Back to the point is that when I now feel those things, I am reminded this is how my students feel over and over and over again throughout the day. And they, it's not just a couple times a week. It is all day, every day. And so now I know why I stunk at PE. It's because I needed to be able to understand my students that I would have years down the road. And now coming up on... Uh, Goodness, now that I think about it, it's been 25 years since I graduated. Where does the time go? But that just goes to show how deep those things are and how long they stay with us. So it's no wonder that a lot of the students that I work with have anxiety or deep hatred for school or have stomach aches when it comes time to go to school. 
And I am now thankful that I went through all that because it helps me to understand my students better. I don't have dyslexia, but I can understand the feeling of inadequacy, the embarrassment that it causes. And so while I would not have wanted to go through all of that agony of PE, <laughs> I am glad that I did now and that I can use it to empathize with my students. So if you are not dyslexic and you are trying to understand how your students feel, think about something that has been extremely difficult for you, something that causes you anxiety, something that caused you embarrassment over and over and over again. And that even now, as you think about it, you get a pit in your stomach and your heart races. Think about that and apply it to how the students feel and it can help you to understand them better. If this video has been helpful to you, make sure that you click the like button because that helps other people to find my videos. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I have a lot of fun things coming up this summer that I'm looking forward to sharing with you. So I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.